All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm here in beautiful Puerto Rico here in February. Most of you guys might still be under snow or super cold weather. I'm having a blast here in Puerto Rico. It's 80 degrees. I'm actually sweating today. And uh, I'm here today to visit a, a farm that I visited two years ago. So check the link down below for the video I made for my gardening channel, Growing Your Greens, where I show how Jean Marie Chocolates uh, grows literally um, chocolate in a forest, literally without destroying nature, without clear cutting it like most common agriculture crops do on big scale. This is a small farm, you know, uh, owned by a family, owned business. They employ local people, pay them a good wage to work on the farm and grow cacao. And uh, so, yeah, I made a video actually just, just earlier on my Growing Your Greens channel how to basically um, weather a hurricane if you are a farm. So you might be interested in that. But basically, as you guys know, Puerto Rico was hit by a hurricane. We heard all over it on the news. And yes, it was bad here. Uh, you know, and now they're finally recovering. Luckily, uh, his cacao farm at this location was only maybe like 10% of the trees were lost, but his other location that had a newer planting, like 60% was basically demolished and ruined, and he's not even caught back up to where he was before the hurricane. So Puerto Rico needs your help, guys, and that's the reason for this episode. You know, I wanted to make a video to help Juan get his chocolate out to more of you guys. I know some of you guys saw my video on the other channel. You guys supported Juan by buying your buying his uh, basically um, cured beans, whether they're raw or roasted, or whether his chocolate bars. Um, you guys could support him and buy that. But you know, I said, hey Juan, right? Uh, you guys have this whole chocolate farm here growing cacao, one of the best fruits on the planet for the fruit itself, not the bean, right? And you guys just process it. You guys should ship the fresh cacao fruit off the island because that is one of the um, crops that USDA allows to get shipped off the island. Most tropical fruits cannot be shipped out of Puerto Rico, but cacao is one of the exceptions, right? So he said, yeah, John, that's great. So I said, great, I'm gonna make a video to help you bring more money into Puerto Rico to also help your nonprofit organization that he started to help other people in Puerto Rico create cacao farms, to create jobs, you know, and give farmers an income so they, they don't go away from Puerto Rico. And if you guys are looking for an opportunity, check my other videos because uh, you can move down to Puerto Rico, start a cacao farm, and literally have a guaranteed income because Juan will buy all the cacao uh, pods from you that you guys could grow. Uh, so, uh, so anyways, so now I'm, I'm here making a video about how you guys could order fresh cacao pods, not heated, not pasteurized, not irradiated, grown under natural conditions, um, and have it shipped direct to you guys anywhere in the United States. So this is the only farm that I'm aware of inside the United States because Port Puerto Rico is a territory in the United States. So technically, this is the USA. Um, uh, and he'll, he grows it. And the commitment that he made to me is that he will, he will pick it and then ship it the next day when he gets an order. Now, it might take him a day or two to pick it because he's a busy guy, but you know, he will not ship an oil, he won't ship you guys old cacao is what that means, you know? And this is going above and beyond what most farms do. As you guys know, you guys go to Whole Foods, the grocery store, you know, you guys are buying like produce that was picked before it's prime. You guys are buying literally produce like tomatoes, right? You guys buy tomatoes, you eat tomatoes from the store, tastes like junk, they taste like crap. But if you get them from the farmer's market, they taste better because at least they're riper. Or if you are lucky enough or grow them yourself and pick them truly ripe, you, you've experienced what a real tomato should taste like. So you're getting all this faux food at the grocery store, in my opinion. So that's why you should support local farmers and or even grow your own. But anyways, this is the next best thing. I got one to basically pick it ripe. Uh, and then ship it the next day to you guys, and you guys are gonna get the freshest cacao uh, anywhere. Whole pod, including the beans, and the fresh fruit, which is what I advocate. So I have had episodes in the past on this YouTube channel where I say, cacao's toxic, don't eat it. And you know, so like, you know, cacao, in my opinion, how it's being promoted in the raw food industry, uh, you know, as just eating raw beans, and you know, they're, so, they're such a superfood, and yes, I'd agree, in cacao, there's definitely superfood properties. It's high in different, antioxidants and phytonutrients. It has theobromine, which is a stimulant, which in my opinion, in high amounts is not good. And I don't recommend people living on cacao beans, although I would say it's okay to eat as much cacao fruit as you can get, because it's actually some work to get the cacao fruit, as you guys will see in a little bit. And the other thing I'll say is cacao should be looked as looked towards as a medicine. It should not be considered a food. You shouldn't eat it every day. You know, I've known people 
people that have eaten raw cacao and have had adrenal problems because of it. You know, so for me, cacao is a, a sacred food that I like to use on occasion. I don't, you know, maybe it's a special birthday party that I'm celebrating. You know, maybe maybe I'm driving late on the road at night and I, and I need like a caffeine fix to stay up so I don't crash my car. And that's a good use of cacao. Bad use of cacao is like, you know, eating it every day. You know, eat your fresh fruits and fresh vegetables every day. You guys can eat as much cacao fruit as you want, but don't eat the beans. Actually in nature, the animals, uh, you know, don't, like monkeys would eat the fruit and they'd spit out the beans so that the bean could then grow into a new tree. So that's my opinion on that. Although I know some of you guys, despite my opinions, will still buy cacao. And if you guys are buying raw cacao, already processed, or if you're a chocolatier looking to buy, get fresh pods, this is definitely the video you guys want to watch so you guys can get the fresh cacao, process it, temper it, grind it, roast it yourself. Anyways, uh, let's go on to the farm and show you guys more about and learn more about cacao and chocolate today. All right, so what I'm gonna say first is if you guys just wanna get cacao fruit shipped directly to you, click the link down below, right? I got you guys a deal for $3 a pound, right, for the cacao plus delivery, which is gonna be about another 20 bucks, right? So for 50 bucks, you guys get about 10 pounds, guaranteed minimum, could be as high as 12, depending on the size of the fruit and all this kind of stuff. And that is the complete pods, right? Not weighing out the beans, he's sending you a complete cacao fruit that looks like this. Now the one thing I can guarantee Juan will do is that he will ship you the ripest cacao, right? No cacao is picked before it's time <laughs> here at uh, Jean Marie Chocolate, right? Uh, and they know, they grow over 24 or 25 different cultivars that they are in trialing, testing, and producing commercially for you guys. And that's the other thing I can guarantee. I can guarantee that the cacao, the box of cacao you get, the fruit you guys get, each one's gonna taste different. So expect that, and that, in my opinion, is a good thing, right? Because they grow so many different varieties, you're gonna get variety, right? You guys know apples, you guys know apple varieties. Granny Smith, in my opinion, tastes horrible. Fuji's taste good. The Honey Crisp are nice and crisp and have a nice fruity flavor. Maybe you've had lucky enough to have Empire or Gravenstein apples, you know, Rome apples. Um, each type of apple has a little bit different flavor and texture, right? And the same thing with cacao. There's 24 different varieties of cacao, but unfortunately when you guys just buy a chocolate, it just is labeled chocolate. It doesn't say the exact specific variety. What I can say is that the most of the varieties that he sells here, or the, the type is actually called the uh, Trinitario uh, type of cacao. And of that type of cacao, and there's three main types, um, there's Forestero, uh, Trinitario, and, uh, and, and something with a C, <laughs> I forget. Um, Carrillo or something like that. So you're gonna get mostly the Trinitarias because that's what they focus on. These are the ones that literally taste the best. And the other, and they have 24 varieties, so each one's gonna be different. And uh, the thing is, he's not gonna harvest unripe ones. So if you guys get a green one from Juan, let him know because he should not be doing that and demand you guys get ripe ones and he replaces the box. What he will ship you are the ripe ones so you guys can see as the, how the cacao forms on the tree here. This is a nice tropical tree. It produces year round unlike other trees like apple trees might produce only one crop a year. This tree will always have fruit on it after it's about two and a half years old. Basically every 20 days they can come in and harvest the fruit off the tree and they are growing the most productive variety so they're always going to have fruit available. In addition they have literally thousands thousands of trees in their plant nursery, but also literally planted in the ground. Uh, this tree, I believe, is probably about five years old. He also has trees that are eight years old and anywhere in between. So as the fruit forms, basically this, this uh, tree will make a flower on the trunk here. Here's a flower here, here's a flower here. It's too small for you guys to see. Here's an immature fruit that didn't get pollinated that's basically just gonna fall off now. But basically if the fruit gets pollinated, uh, then it turns into a green pod, right? Green pods are always unripe fruit in cacao. So if, somebody, if you're buying green cacao pods, they're not ripe. They should turn into different colors, right? Um, it, it may start out as red, but it may start out as green. And then basically as it ripens in general, but not always for the most part, they're gonna turn yellow uh, when ripe, right? And that's when he's gonna ship them to you guys. On occasion, you might get a variety that actually ripens to red. So red can be okay, but red could also mean that it's unripe as well. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, you want them yellow or red, so that's what you should be getting. And when they're yellow or red, then they're gonna be fully developed. The flavor is full and complex. And in addition, more importantly, for you guys that are buying the whole pods, uh, the fruits are gonna, the fruit itself, the fruit pulp is gonna taste sweeter. So what I wanna do for you guys next is actually show you guys how cacao is normally processed and uh, you know how you may process it at home. If you guys get the fruits 
and um, and then show you guys actually how uh, some of the fruits on the trees and what the fruits gonna look like when he ships it to you. All right, so uh, let's go along the journey how they process their raw cacao here, uh, and then also compare it to how other places that sell raw cacao in a bag may be processing. All right, so now I want to show you guys how the cacao is processed here. Should you want to buy the beans or actually what the fruit looks like if you get it shipped to you guys, right? So basically, if you guys get the, sh the, sh the fruit shipped to you, it's gonna look something like this. Now, this is a variety that actually kind of, that blushes kind of like uh, pinkish red when they're ripe, although most of them will be yellow, as I said. Um, don't worry, you don't need to get the red ones. That's a different variety. And as I said, he grows 20 different, 24 different varieties that may end up in your box. So everyone's gonna taste different. And that's a good thing because you're gonna really get to taste different flavor notes. So once you get the cacao, you wanna open it up and you just crack it in half. And basically it's gonna look like this. I've already eaten some pods out of here. And a lot of this is what they call the conch or the shell. You basically don't even use this and you should compost it, right? And so this is what you're gonna get on the inside. It's basically just gonna have like beans and then around the bean is basically the fruit. And so this is like, a, it, the fruit is actually kind of white and it kind of reminds you of like a lychee consistency. It's like slimy and uh, you know, just delicious. Not a lot of fruit around the seed. So I will got, warn you guys, you know, there's not a lot of fruit. That's why it's gonna take you some time to eat all this because you're gonna take one bean off at a time with a fruit, put it in your mouth, and you're gonna suck. <laughs> you're gonna suck all the fruit pulp off the bean. Mmm, wow. And you're gonna think, you're thinking right now, John, tell us what it tastes like, man. So I, I mean, I can't tell you guys what it tastes like. It tastes like chocolate fruits, which I know most of you guys have never had. And the cool thing is, every fruit that you get will taste a little bit different, right? I can't tell you guys this. In general, you guys are gonna get fruit that are mildly sweet. These aren't sweet like a light or anything. You know, they have a sweetness to them, but they also have a flavor complexity. I'm not into wine, but if I was into wine, you got you wine connoisseurs out there watching this know how wine could just vary just a little bit and have such a complex flavor. That's how I have to describe the cacao, the cacao fruit itself. Complex flavor, like there's floral notes, there's sweet notes. You know, to some people it might taste like, uh, you know, a melon or it might taste like a uh, papaya. And it just, it really tastes like flowers, but sweet and like complex. And other than that, I can't really say it tastes like anything because it, it tastes like cacao, honestly. So you're gonna suck it all the fruit off. And then you're gonna spit out the bean. Now with the bean, once you eat all the fruit off, then you could take this bean and then you could, you know, uh, normally, they, they, you, you could dry it. Basically, you could put it in your dr dehydrator, dry it at 105, so then you have truly raw cacao. I was only ever able to do this you know, once I got my own beans and was able to dry it and I was so proud, I got truly raw cacao because the stuff that you're buying in the store has raw cacao. Probably not raw because number one is missing the testa, which is the outside shell that has been removed and in, in many cases they need to remove that with some heat because if it's raw, it's stuck on too much and it's not coming out, right? So anyways, let me tell you guys how they normally process this fruit and then we'll get back to more about the fruit that I find more interesting. A normal cacao is processed on big plantations or farms by basically opening up uh, the fruit, uh, disposing of the conch, and then they take the fruit and then they basically put it into a fer fermentation vessel. Here on this farm, they use a wooden box. You know, other places may just pile it up into big piles. And then, you know, uh, the fermentation basically happens by bacteria break down the fruit, which is normally a part of the fruit uh, of the cacao that's actually not used. So it's basically burned off in the fermentation process. It's usually not used. And I think that's quite sad because the fruit to me is the most valuable and more del most delicious part. Uh, anyways, uh, Juan is telling me in his fermentation boxes, he has monitored it. It doesn't get over 110. It's between 100 and 110 degrees. I have not verified this, so I do not know. His fermentation boxes are empty right now and, and I didn't bring my digital thermometer to test it. But that being said, from testimonials from uh, cacao farm workers that have worked on other farms before that I've heard, you know, some, some of the temperatures in fermentation boxes or fermentation areas can exceed 118 degrees, get up to 180 degrees. You know, I don't know, I haven't been there, but you know, the, the whole fact of the matter is if you don't do it yourself, you really don't know. Even if they're saying raw, it might not be raw if that is what's important to you, right? So uh, the other thing is, uh, once it comes out of fermentation box, uh, then they basically lie it in the sun. So inside the fermentation box, it takes about uh, seven days to ferment and then ready to go on to the next step. And they say the fermentation, you know, breaks things down, changes the flavor and all this kind of stuff. 
and you know I'm not a chocolatier so I don't really know why it's good I could I know that I've eaten the fruits I've taken the beans I've actually put the beans in my dehydrator and then I have raw chocolate and that's good enough for me but more importantly the thing I really like to do with the with the fruit as I'll be doing after this trip because I'm taking back a luggage full of the bean of the pods um, the fruit is I'm gonna be putting my freeze dryer so freeze dried cacao is the bomb and I'm gonna go on the record to say freeze-dried cacao is the best way you should eat it because now you're when you eat it freeze-dried it preserves the fruit preserves the bean and you get to eat the, the the bean with the fruit and the fruit instead of being like you know soft and and gelatinous and have a flavor it's like hard and crunchy it's amazing and once again I only eat those in limited amounts <laughs> uh, because I am eating the cacao seed I would eat as much fruit as I can and uh, you know uh, oh, and the other thing is, if you guys buy these fruits, right, keep them away from your dog. Last time I was here at Jean Marine Chocolate, they gave me a, a bag of cacao, and I left my luggage on the floor, and somehow my dog got into the bag of cacao and literally ate like half the bag of cacao nibs. And I was like so worried he would not make it. Luckily, he made it, but I don't want you guys to have that experience, but I will tell you he was more hyper than he's ever been in his life. So keep the cacao away from dogs. It's not good for them to eat it. Oh, and other animals. We should probably be only eating it. Don't feed it to anything else. So after the fruit has come out of the fermentation step that here at the farm could take about seven days, six to eight days, uh, then the next stage is that it actually then gets sun dried. So just in the sun, when it's not raining, it's just spread out. And uh, the beans that have been fermented are now sun drying in the sun to get the right moisture level. If the beans are not dried and they start packaging them and ship them, then they're going to mold. So they need to get them properly dried and here at the farm this happens in the sun so you can be assured that if you want raw cacao uh, you know you could buy it from the farm here and it's going to be as raw as possible once again I haven't tested the fermentation um, you know uh, temperatures there but I would trust them here rather than some big huge corporation that's just getting their beans out of Ecuador not in the USA and you don't know how it's been processed I mean Fermentation steps could be hotter than desired. The drying steps in many cases, you know, can they can use tunnel drying, you know, because it happens faster and they're not going to take the time of seven days, literally that delays production seven days uh, because they want to do it right. I mean, they are chocolatiers here. They make their own chocolate. They know that sun drying and slow drying makes a difference. Uh, that being said, uh, on a personal note, uh, I would encourage shade drying, which might even be more beneficial than sun drying um, if it's happening, uh, you know, in the shade because uh, the sun may oxidize some of the phytonutrients potentially. Uh, that being said, the other thing about the beans here, once they're dried, if you're buying them raw anyways, is they have the testa or the outer skin on them. So I'm going to show you guys this because you guys have probably never seen this before. This is the outer skin. I mean, you barely, you guys could barely buy uh, the beans with the outer skin on them. Normally they're shelled and they're just brown, but this is actually just the skin. Let me go ahead and break this. I don't know how long, this hasn't been, uh, been uh, drying in the sun so long. But you guys can see on the inside, right? That's what your cacao pod usually looks like. If we peel off this skin, uh, you guys usually get the cacao beans that are basically this color right here, right? And you see how I'm peeling off that skin there? It's called the testa. This bean's not bad. Hmm, kind of tastes like alcoholic, actually. But that's what you're usually buying. Well, it's quite good. So if you're buying the, the raw cacao without the skin there, right, Juan tells me that on the raw beans, they're not removed because they're so hard to remove. I had to peel off each one. Uh, so he has to roast them to basically make them easier to remove. So the chances are if you're buying raw cacao that actually just has the, uh, the beans like this or the nibs, Without that testa, it's been heat processed, probably hotter than what, what, what raw foodists would like. So that's the story of cacao. And then cacao, of course, is uh, you know, added and sweetened and all this stuff. As you guys can see inside here, the bean is actually kind of purple. And that's because it's not fully cured yet. It needs to dry more fully. And, uh, you know, it's actually a little bit pleasant to eat. It's not like super bitter like dark chocolate is. I mean, to me, it kind of tastes like... Um, it actually tastes kind of like something fermented, like fermented vegetables. Quite interesting. Anyways, that's if you guys want to buy his, uh, you know, uh, raw chocolate nibs in the husk still. Um, but actually, the, the whole point of this video is to share with you guys actually that you guys can get the fruit. So that means when you guys get the fruit, you guys get to eat the, eat the fruit itself. And you guys can dry your own cacao, process it, ferment it, do whatever you guys want with it. So actually, let's go into the field and show you guys some of the cacao that he may even pick to you and then talk to you guys more about 
um, you know, how much cacao you'll be getting, uh, how he's going to ship it, and all that good stuff. All right, so now I want to show you guys actually a little bit of the farm. Uh, this is the farm where the majority of the mature cacao trees are being grown. As you guys can see on the ground, basically that's all the conch or the shells that have been basically dried out. And uh, this is how they compost. Basically, they just feed cacao pods to the cacao trees to basically feed them. You know, they use only compost, leaves that break down. They don't use any, um, you know, man-made fertilizer. So, you know, this is, is not considered organic uh, because it's not certified. But, you know, uh, I haven't seen any kind of, you know, fertilizer bags and they have all basically natural practices to grow them. They also do not spray the cacao with any toxic pesticides. As you guys can see, they have a natural system here that's uh, terraced and basically the leaves drop in place. They basically break down and then they feed the trees. And I want to talk to you guys more about some of the cacao that Juan will be picking and shipping to you guys. All right, so now I'm in the uh, field of cacao with so many cacao trees around me and he just doesn't have a monoculture here, right? While he does grow cacao, in between some of the cacao, he has actually uh, bananas planted, he has papayas planted, he has coffee planted, he has yucca uh, planted or yucca, and then he also has, uh, what else does he have? Papayas, uh, bananas, coffee. Yeah, he has a whole bunch of things like intermixed with the cacao. Anyways, uh, so you know, that's a diversified farm versus like a monoculture, uh, doing it all natural here. So once again, this is another cacao uh, tree here, and you guys can see all the fruit. I mean, these trees can be quite productive, and he only grows the most productive varieties. And you guys can see here's like a baby cacao. If you guys can see that, it's like small and red, and then they get bigger and red. Then as they get as they get a little bit older, they kind of turn into the green. They get a red with green, and then this is kind of more green. And then finally, that green turns into the yellow in which case it's ripe. So this one's almost ripe. It could be a little more yellow, but I wanna go ahead and harvest this for you guys and uh, share with you guys the experience because literally Juan is gonna come down, harvest fruit uh, for you guys, and then uh, he's gonna ship it to you. So uh, yeah, this is a uh, fruit. And then these guys are really hard, so you can kind of take a knife, be careful, don't use a ceramic knife, only a metal one, cut it down the middle and crack it in half. If you're super strong, you could put it between your arms like this and press, uh, and you heard a crack. <laughs> and then basically uh, you could open it up and you guys will see all the delicious cacao fruit in there. Now this is a nice stage because it's not uh, getting too dried out yet. There's lots of fruit pulp around the seed. Mm. This one kind of tastes like, I mean, the, the fluffiness reminds me of like cotton candy. Um, and then I'm like digging the fruit off the, off the seed itself. I mean, it has like a really nice floral flavor. I mean, it tastes so much. It's like an indicator of what the, the bean on the inside will taste like. Mm. Quite good. So there is the uh, bean on the inside. And then if we uh, basically bite this open, you guys can see it's actually purple on the inside. And if I try to chew this, to me, chewing that, it's soft. It's kind of bitter, like I don't really want to eat this. So, um, you know, you might not want to eat these raw like this, but you can if you want. <laughs> um, but what I would do is you could dehydrate these and then they, they kind of, I would say, cure and then they turn the brown color, which would be good then to use in, in recipes. But as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and take this fruit out and then I'm going to just freeze dry the whole pod and that was the best way I found to, uh, to preserve them and then eat them. Now, I will tell you guys that the fruit, I have not researched the benefits of the fruit. Of course, there's lots of you know, websites with benefits of the cacao nibs or the cacao bean itself. You know, I think it's high in magnesium and all these things. And you know, um, I would encourage you guys to limit your consumption of the cacao beans themselves. You know, save them for a rainy day, save them for special occasions, um, but eat as much fruit as you like. I have to research the fruit and find out the health benefits of fruit. And you know, on my particular diet, I like to, you know, get as much variety as I can and especially experience new taste and flavor sensations, you know, because I know this is one of, of those that you guys, most of you guys haven't ever tried. I think, uh, you know, I can show you guys around here more, but I think what I want to do is show you guys actually some of the cacao fruit uh, that will be getting processed by Juan, or if you guys bought it, would have been shipped to you guys. And then also go into actually how he's going to ship you guys 10 pounds for one low flat rate, literally $3 a pound plus the shipping.
So now I want to show you guys actually the ripe cacao pods that have just been picked by Juan to actually they're processing and going to be drying this stuff because they don't currently have any customers for the fresh stuff. And uh, uh, this is what it looks like, right? So they come in different colors and shapes. So don't be alarmed if, you, if they, they look a little bit different, right? Juan is going to personally select and ship out you guys the ripest uh, fruit. Now, if you guys are buying it from other places, you guys want to be aware of these things. And the other thing is I don't know of any other uh, you know, places in the United States that will actually uh, grow it pick it the day before and then ship it to you. Although there are, are resellers out there that may charge you more money. Um, this is actually something you don't want. This is actually a fungal disease black spot. You guys can see this is totally like uh, brown, discolored and kind of soft. Um, so Juan will never sell, send you guys these ones. Uh, he's gonna send you actually nice fruit that looks like these. Now, some of these guys are too big for shipping, right? So he will not be sending you guys these ones that are too big. They're not gonna fit in the flat rate box. And how this is how he makes it affordable for you guys. He's gonna ship you guys more like this size right here, right? So this is a nice size, right? Like this size and this size. And you guys can see like, here's a super big one. Super big ones don't mean they're super better, right? Could be a different variety. You know, um, but yeah, so he's going to ship you guys nice, these, this sizes that is guaranteed uh, to be ripe. Look at these fruits, they're really nice. And he's going to have to wipe down each one to make sure there's no little white spots on them, which can be some aphids or other kind of bugs because the USDA does not like that and they will stop the shipment uh, from him. Uh, some of your pods may have a little green at the top and that's normal. You know, if you buy put ripe papayas, sometimes they're a little green at the top, completely normal. So this is basically what you can expect when you order. Uh, they're going to be fresh and I think they're going to probably, once you get them right, um, you need to, um, you know, eat them within the next week for sure to ensure that they're the best. If you wait longer than that, they may start drying out and fermenting in the pod. I will say that last time I was here in Puerto Rico and got pods from uh, Juan and took them back to my house. Basically, I got lazy. I put it in my fridge and they basically, all the pods turned black and they got kind of like dried out. But even after two weeks, they're still good. I wouldn't say they're perfect, but they're still edible. And at that point, basically, I just put them in my dehydrator with the uh, white pith and all to dehydrate the fruit on the seed. And then I could basically store them. Um, since that time, I got a freeze dryer. So now I freeze dry my cacao uh, fruit and beans, which are actually the best. And so the thing um, that Juan's going to do is basically he's going to sell them to you for $3 a pound, right? So that's super cheap. I mean, can you go to Whole Foods and buy some specialty fruit for $3 a pound? You guys can't even get like sumo tangerines. They're like $3.50 on sale at Whole Foods. So this is less and you're supporting an American small farmer to help him, you know, uh, spread his mission about rebuilding uh, Puerto Rico by creating more cacao farms. And But he needs to have a market for these fruits, right? Um, so it's $3 a pound, but the, here's a, the catch. The catch is you have to buy a box full. So minimum, the box is going to be a flat rate box shipped to you at this time when this video is being made. It costs $20 to ship approximately. The cacao fruit is going to be 10 pounds. And, uh, you know, in a flat rate box, it may be as high as 12, but it's going to be 10 minimum guaranteed, which means you'll get about 16 to 18 of these size of fruits, right? So 50 bucks basically delivered for 16 to 18 fruits and, and more more importantly for an experience that you won't be able to get anywhere so five dollars for delivered fresh cacao picked fruit is an amazing deal um, so i would encourage you guys to try that uh, or at least to get to get one box to try it if you never have a force so you can experience what true raw cacao fruit tastes like and then of course you guys could dry your beans ferment your beans do whatever uh, to the beans you guys want and, and just have new flavor and taste sensations and more importantly get some of these viable phytonutrients in you right once again link is down below if you guys want to order but what i want to do next actually we're going to go ahead and share a few words with juan to learn more about his chocolate farm why he's so passionate about cacao and 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 he's going to tell you guys why you guys should order his beans or his his fruits <laughs> instead of getting them elsewhere so now I have the opportunity to interview for you guys and you guys get to get a few words from literally the farmer that's growing the cacao and who will be picking the cacao to send to you guys direct from his farm here in Puerto Rico, USA, uh, Juan Eche Varilla uh, with Jean Marie Chocolates. So uh, thank you Juan for uh, being on the show and thank you for providing this opportunity that I haven't known of any, but any other farm that's able to ship cacao because you are the largest cacao producer here in Puerto Rico and cacao cannot be shipped from like Hawaii to the States, but you can ship it here from Puerto Rico to uh, the United States. Um, so do you want to say, um, you know, a, a say why is your cacao here grown in Puerto Rico uh, better than other cacaos grown around the world first off? Well, the, the first thing that uh, all our people should know is that we are selecting special varieties uh, for flavor. 
we send samples to master chocolatiers and based on their uh, analysis or organolectic analysis which is the flavor and complexity that the fruit may have we decide if we planted uh, develop them or not mm. so that's why we got a selected uh, variety that's are the only one that go to the farm the new farm that we are developed that way we guarantee that the flavor will, see, will be an experience that is a special one and uh, that that's why we said our cacao would be something special because we are developing the new farm based on those criteria at wow. the beginning so he's selecting the best variety so tell us about this variety right behind us this is a a red one and i know you have like over what two dozen different varieties that you're offering to people so literally every cacao pod in the box will taste a little bit different and this is a good thing now yeah. Yeah, so as you will mention about this variety and some of the other varieties and 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 wh why everyone's going to taste different yeah it's uh, uh you what you're going to receive will be uh, uh fruit from different trees but all they are already tested and they pass the test that they are one of the best they have a lot of of, of differences be, between them but all then meets the requirement that we are looking which is a uh, top quality level so when you uh, got a cacao uh, seed and you uh, swallow them you will feel uh, flavor from other fruits and that's the uh, the special thing that the cacao has that is only one flavor you find a lot of flavors in the same in the same fruit which is very very particular so it's a really complex flavor that they're going to yeah. experience that they've never experienced before yeah so one after somebody buys the the cacao fruit opens it and then eats the fruit off the seed what can somebody do with the seed at that point or the bean well um it's very easy to make uh, homemade chocolate mm. uh, raw raw chocolate and um you can consume that way so we can we can put a simple uh, uh set of instruction how you can make their own chocolate with the with the seed that come out from the fruits wow i tell you guys that's a one-of-a-kind experience you guys can get the fruit eat the fruit itself and then process your own cacao beans to make your own raw chocolate nothing is better than that and so the other thing is um, uh, Juan, do you want to mention maybe how the hurricane has, has hurt Puerto Rico and how bringing money into Puerto Rico by supporting a small farmer such as yourself can help, help the economy here and help the people here? Yeah, we, uh, we need the support of people outside because we are trying to stand up from, from the hurricane be, uh, heavily damaged around the island. So the farmers feel that very, very bad because we lost most of the, of the crops that we are working with. The cacao shop that is very strong, three, it recovers. Now our farm is producing again, but we need uh, research to move ahead and, and, and develop new farms and fix the one that we lost. And that's why we are trying to encourage the people to buy product from Puerto Rico. That way you can help us to move ahead. Awesome. And the other thing you guys don't know about Juan, he's a very modest guy. Like. He also started a nonprofit to actually to help local farmers to grow cacao so that they could be financially stable and create resilience. So you want to maybe say a few words about how the purchase with, with these chocolate pods will help part of that uh, mission that you have to make uh, Puerto Rico strong again. Yeah, yeah, we are sharing our knowledge with uh, all farmers around the island and the people that are interested in planting cacao and developing cacao farms. Uh, the way to uh, develop with the best uh, varieties available and at the same time we are making a, a Porsche uh, deal with them so encouraging them to go ahead and do it because the market is there that's why we are encouraging other people to buy all the product we produce because that way we can buy more and help more and more farms will be developing because of that progress awesome and and your purchase here of the pods well let's Juan know and lets other farmers know that hey these products these raw cacao pods are necessary and can be shipped so hey share this video on facebook share it on your different social media outlets so more people can be aware about the fresh chocolate they can get delivered to them so that they could make their own chocolate bar from the fruit something that you've never been able to do until now uh, because of Juan and and the infrastructure and because his trees most of his trees anyway some of them got ripped up by the hurricane <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, some of them remain, and he's able to produce the chocolate for you guys. So, once again, I encourage you guys to support uh, Puerto Rico, the cacao, and more importantly, get flavor and taste sensations, and more importantly, an experience that you've never been able to have before. 
in your life, uh, thanks to Juan. So if you guys uh, want, do you have any final comments or words of wisdom you'd like to share with my viewers today before we uh, sign off? Well, uh, so just say thanks to you for giving us the opportunity to be here with us today and give us the opportunity to send a message and, and talk to the people around the world. We know that you have a lot of followers and encouraging the people that look to Puerto Rico, try to help uh, uh, buying our products and that way you will help uh, Puerto Rico to move ahead. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, so once again, link is down below to his website so you guys can order that uh, box of fresh cacao fruit. Once again, 10 pounds guaranteed, ship flat rate uh, anywhere in the United States that they will ship that flat rate box. Sorry, this uh, you know, you have to make special arrangements if you guys live somewhere else and I don't know if Juan will work with you on that. I've just arranged for people in the in the United States that, that he can ship cacao to in the flat rate box because it is affordable. The shipping just went up recently and just got super expensive. But with a flat rate, it makes it affordable for everybody so that he can get some of his amazing chocolate off the island and to you guys. Link is down below. Um, also, if you guys like this video, want me to come back and do future episodes with Juan, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to see how I'm going to be processing the chocolate I'm taking home with me today, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave some comments down below. Maybe I'll make a video on how I freeze dry my chocolate and the experience. It's so amazing to have freeze dried chocolate. I don't know if you guys should buy a freeze dryer just to freeze dry his chocolate, but uh, freeze dry technology is amazing. It preserves the most nutrients in the whole world. Uh, also, be sure to share this video with other people so that they can help support Juan and help Puerto Rico be strong again. And also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes. I've coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning or what new fruit or vegetable you'll be learning about on my YouTube channel so you guys can get healthier by eating more fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Uh, All right, so uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, including cacao fruit. They're always the best.